Psalm 27, for me, is one of the main psalms of the Bible, along with the 23, 91, the two most famous ones. But just a few people know Psalm 27, that for me, in my opinion, is very underestimated. Because this Psalm of David was a base, a foundation, somewhere where I could lean on on the beginning of my faith when I didn't know God yet, when I was starting to get to know God. Some parts of this psalm spoke directly to me, to my heart. And special, I remember in my youth, when I saw my family come crumbling down, when my parents were separating, my father betrayed my mom and my whole family came down. I remember that I found comfort in these words from Psalm 27 from King David on verse 10. When my father and my mother forsake me, then the Lord will take care of me. So it's not that they forsake me. Indirectly, the forsaken was felt. Because when your parents are not able to sustain their own lives, their own marriage, what they can offer to the children, I would love the parents, moms and dads, nowadays may think more on their children when they would be considering separation. Because if they had any idea on the impact that that has on the child, they would do a greater effort to save the marriage. But this is another story. But back to Psalm 27. The Psalm 27 speaks about the strength of God. Right at the beginning it says, The Lord is the strength of my life. Of whom shall I be afraid? David, who was very familiar with enemies, wars. He speaks of wars. He speaks of adversaries in the Psalms. My enemies and foes, they stumble and fell when they come to eat up my flesh. Goliath said that, isn't it? Goliath said that. But he said, they stumbled and fell. Though an army may encamp against me, my heart shall not fear. Though war may rise against me, in this I will be confident. So a man who was familiar with war and enemies, with adversaries, who had to run away for many years of his life, he had to run away from King Saul, who desired to kill him, which meant enemies inside of the house, outside of the house, inside of Israel, outside Israel. David, indeed, in fact, was a warrior, a true warrior. But all these wars that he faced, and were true wars, were not wars as a metaphor. No. It's a metaphor. I'm fighting a war. No. He fought real battles, real wars. Wars on you being beheaded. In the midst of these wars that he faced, he sought and he found strength in the Lord, in God. His strength would not come from his arm, from the sword, would not come from the arts of war, but from his relationship with God. This was the main strength from David. Of course, as a warrior, he had to know how to fight. Even against the Goliath, he used what he had, which was that slingshot with a stone in his hands. was what he knew what to do. He had to use what he had. But the strength, the victory, would come from above. And this is what you have to learn. All of us, we have to learn and put inside of us two main things. First of all, it's very important that you may be strong. This is very important. If you're not a strong person, you will invite to yourself abuse, mistreating behavior. You will attract to you problems because unfortunately, in the law of the strongest one, isn't it? They speak about the law of the strongest one in this world, which is the natural law of this world, of this life. We know 
that the weakest one is swallowed up. The weakest ones are devoured. So you cannot give yourself the luxury on being weak or to give in to weakness. You have to be strong. It's necessary you to be strong. If you are weak, either in your emotional, which means you are emotionally weak, emotions is the main reason for the weakness of many, emotional people tend to be weak because they are victims of their emotions, they end up giving in, they become easy prey for their own emotions, either sadness or anger. Anyway, emotion ends up making the person weak, either emotional strength or financial strength. You need to be financially strong, but with a lot of care. To not be mistaken by making money your fortitude. Money is not fortitude, it only helps. Money solves many things, but don't make out of it your God. Don't commit the mistake on putting something or someone in the place of God. You have to be strong, financially speaking. But don't make out of money your God. It is not everything. You have to be strong physically. You have to take care of your health. It's very bad when a, there is a person that has a weak health. And many people end up having health problems because of themselves. Because they never focused on their health. They never took care of their health. They thought that the health that they had when they were 20, 30, it will go on until they go as an elderly. And later on, they found out that those actions on eating whatever they wanted, on not exercising, thinking that they could do whatever they wanted, you would not lead them to get in the future with a long and extensive bill. You have to take care of your health. You have to plan yourself to get to a advanced age with health for you to not be a burden neither to yourself nor to anyone you have to be strong in your health you have to be strong in your relationships your marriage has to be strong your family has to be strong you have to be strong from every side because the alternative is to be weak and if you are weak i repeat myself you will invite defeat is the law of the strongest one we live in a world that is subject to the law of the strongest one so this is the first point you have to be strong this is not an option, this is a necessity, to be strong. Now, the second point is to understand, even though we have to do our part as David, to learn how to use the slingshot, was a warrior, he had to learn how to use the sword, he had to know something about the war, but he said here, the Lord is the strength of my life, our strength above all, when we fail, the human strength fails us. Because even though you may take care of your health, you can be surprised with a sickness that was on your genes. Even though you may work and earn money, you can be surprised by a pandemic with a situation that it comes and steal the fruit of your work, isn't it? As long as you try to be strong in a way or the other, you are subject to the things that are natural. That's why you have to put your strength in the supernatural, as David used to do. His strength will come from above, will come from God. So when you make out of God your strength, you are not subject, neither obsessed on seeking strength in other things, which is a useless search. There are people that become obsessed with the body. I will have that nice body, I'll go to the gym, and then you check your diet and become obsessed with vitamins, and later on they are sick, which means they may out of their wisdom, their intelligence, nutritional intelligence, they made their God. That is their God. Take care of your health, but don't make out of nutrition, medicine, your God. Take care of your financial life. Save money. Organize your finances. Have a budget. 
be balanced on your expenditure. Don't be vain on wanting to buy what you cannot have it, but don't make out of no asset, of no value in your bank account, your God, your safety. Your strength comes from above. He is our strength. This is what pleases God. It pleases the Lord when you make out of Him your strength. Be strong. But remember, the truth and greatest strength is the one that comes from above. Did you like this? Would you like to hear it again? Listen to it as many times as you need until this content becomes part of you. Don't forget to leave your like, comment and share. See you next time.